All right, let's get it on a Friday. And despite the slanderous remarks by Doug Karsh and Kang and Rico, no, there won't be any yelling today. My vocal cords will not allow for it. This is this is maturity. I'm going to speak to you in normal tone. It will be smoldering rage today as we begin a Friday. I like that. Personal growth, and I have a personal growth story too, Mike. I'll let you know about that a little, a little bit later. I can't wait. Um, so here's how we're going to play this today. We're going to start with state. We'll get into the Lions. We'll go back to state, uh, and we'll balance it out. But here's where I'm at with the game, and – I don't really think it's all that surprising. I, I I laugh when every when every fanboy reverts to, wow, that was just an incredible game. All that is is just a defense mechanism for all the things your team didn't do right. Michigan State gave up 100 points in a basketball game. Their defensive communication, their back-end D, their help D, it was atrocious. And they made a 5'7 point guard who's not tall enough to ride a ride at Cedar Point look like Pistol Pete. Yeah, Noel's a nice player. No, 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 no. No, no, get it right. A 5'8 point guard on one leg. Well, yeah, I was going to get there. I'm with you. And it's like, you think I'm just going to sit here and go, well, you know, K-State just had that night. No, I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, they played well, but guess what? Half of his assists were because we never adjusted and continued to overhelp versus making that kid finish. So... All I view it as is they blew a Final Four, Rico. They absolutely screwed the pooch last night. And look, Malik Hall, make an and one, win game. Grab air ball, win game. Don't have a ball inbounded off your ass cheeks, win game. Don't get ripped for a dunk, win game. It's so many things. And then the last possession, it's kind of them in a nutshell. They didn't even get a yep. shot to the rim. Moment was too big for everybody. So my point is this. If you're going to call in, you do whatever you like. You can tell me, Mike, I disagree. I thought it was a magical evening. Fine, your perspective. But the way I look at it, you play a role in how your opponent plays sometimes. And Noel was really good. But for God's sakes, can we please just acknowledge, why did we have Tyson Walker on Noel for so long when it was clear he couldn't guard him? Why did we wake to put Aikens on him? Why did Izzo not adjust at halftime and stop helping? Just stop. If Noel was going to make a living driving to the bucket on one leg at 5'7", right. then you live with it. But my God, Rico, three half-court passes for dunks. That has nothing to do with him being amazing. It has everything to do with players like Jaden Aikens having their head up their ass on the baseline. Mike, you get right. It's like, okay, the first time he does it, okay, yeah. But by the end of the game, you already know this is what they do. You're right. Don't leave your man. Guard him at all time because at any moment, the ball is coming there. And instead, they kept falling asleep. It was almost like they had a front row seat to the Marquise Noel show, and they didn't want to miss a moment. They were in awe instead of just playing in defense. And that's what was frustrating. Guys, you like all the pretty assists that he did? Well, he did 19 of them. Which one was your favorite one? Because that's what I felt like asking the players because all they did was just sit around and watch. And it was, oh, backdoor cut, backdoor alley-oop. Watch this. Have him throw it from half court. I, the, he he looked like Metal Lark Lemon out there. I'm going to have to look that up, but I'll trust you on that. Globetrotters. Oh, got it. Okay, I'm back. No, I, I, I'd love to hear from the people on it. And look, I, I understand the refrain is going to be different for most fans, but I just, I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. I don't view I don't view giving up 100 points in an NCAA tournament game to a 5'7 guard. This isn't Patrick Ewing in 85. You know, this isn't unibrow uh, 2010. This, right. this is a nice player, okay? But give me a break. None of you knew who he was before last night. So I don't want to hear it. A 5'7 guard in right. today's game where most players are – 6'4 and above, 6'6 six, six and above. You're a willing participant in some of that stuff. 10 assists, I'll live with. 20, sorry, you played a role there. MSU showed their ass on defense. And I thought their plan stunk. Their plan stunk. 
But then again, Mike, I thought the plan got adjusted because all of a sudden, bing, light bulb, Tom Izzo said, I'm going to put Jay Nakins on him. And Jaden just said, right here, right now, son, you're not going to drive past me. You're not going to shoot your shot. I don't need any help because I don't know why we were doubling and triple teaming a 5'8 point guard. Still don't get that to this day. That's my leaving point. Leaving guys wide open because that's what he wanted. And then all of a sudden at the end of the game, that all went away. Let's just forget about it. Right. And, yeah, final that final 45 seconds, probably not the best of Malik Hall's career at MSU. Nah, it was. Missed uh, free throw, didn't get the rebound, moment too big to shoot a three. He was awful on defense. Oh, and, and for the cherry on top, yeah, let me knock down Tyson Walker to make sure he doesn't shoot it either. No, and I mean, the other thing that killed me, too, and whether it was Carson Cooper or Matty Sissoko, they both looked like kids looking for the retainers in the dark. I mean, they they were nowhere on defense. And K-State, to their credit, exposed the hell out of it. But there had to be a better plan. MSU got exactly what they deserved. They lost. And it sucks. But you know what really uh, what upset me? I thought Tom Izzo turned into Harbaugh. I want to play for you this postgame interview real quick, this audio. Rico, this is you can't say this even if you believe it. You just can't. The sour grapes were so strong. It's like, no, Tom, don't do this. Take a listen to this, where he basically says K-State got lucky. Take a listen. Uh, yeah, listen, it's not like this horribly egregious thing. I just know if I heard Juwan Howard or Harbaugh say that, I'd lose it. And I'm not going to yell because I'll lose my voice today because my cords are shot. But you can't do it. Don't use the luck word with an opponent. Just pay your respect, say it in private. I didn't like it. Now, best thing about Tom Izzo, Mike, is he will tell you how he feels. The worst thing about Tom Izzo, Mike, he will tell you exactly how he feels. And sometimes it does get him in trouble. And sometimes you do need coach speak, but he's more of an honest type person. Now, the thing, I, I like the fact that every now and then you get a coach or a player who just tells you, you know what, I hate that guy. And you're like, wow, that's some good audio. But then we in the media go, ooh. But, yeah, I remember when Tom did this for the uh, Larry Nasser stuff. And as soon as he said it, I think he was like, yeah, I hope we get the right guy. I just dropped my head and was like, you're going to live to regret that phrase right there. Sometimes it's the verbal diarrhea. He doesn't know when to stop. He doesn't know when to be quiet. He doesn't know when to just say both teams played hard. They kicked our butts. Hat tip to them. I'm going to go talk to my guys in the locker room. It's really that simple. Yeah, and the problem is anyone who watched the game, it, you know, here, you want you want lucky? We got lucky Noel rolled his ankle and was hobbled. Call it what it is. Mm-hmm. So I don't need to hear yeah. the luck word. I just, defensively, it was just, the pick and roll defense was an atrocity. The helping was awful. The spatial awareness was worse. And it's a bummer because to me, they had every every way, every pathway, every ability to make a Final Four. They blew it. You blew it. Yeah. Yeah, because the Noel shot was not lucky. It was effort. Because a lot of mistakes were made, as we often say. But when you look at the game, Mike, a microcosm of two plays was kind of the difference in that. Noel busting his behind to go save the ball, turn around on a bad foot, may have traveled, don't know, banks it in. That was effort. On the flip side, Malik Hall sees the ball, decides, I'm not going to go after it, Let's the referees decide what it's going to be, and it went against him. That was a lack of effort. Right there, those two plays showed me which team really wanted that game. Yeah, and and it's also, too, you know what? I can abide you don't have a lot of talent. Like, you're never going to hear me flip out about Carson Cooper. He's not that talented. It's not a big deal. The kid tries hard. He was lost out there last oh. night. What? Mm, mm. What? What? But they see that that's something that God does go back onto Tom. He didn't go to the portal and chose, get a big man. Right there. Yep. You chose to show everybody. I don't need the portal. The portal is everything that's wrong with these other teams and why they're not winning. You sat on three or four scholarships that you did not use. Aren't our best you two players went, portal guys? Tyson Walker and Joey Hauser? Yeah, that that was an awkward reality when he was patting himself on the back one day saying, well, you know, all these portal guys, I'm like, you know, two or three, your best scores are from the portal. You didn't recruit them. They didn't come here originally. Yeah. And an awkward pause. And look, one one guy who takes a lot of crap, and I admit it, he's a tough watch some nights, but A.J. Hogard put the team on his back for a long stretch in that game. Hauser kind of disappeared. 
Tyson Walker did not have some great night. He heated up late, but at one point, I think he was two for 11 from the field. And Hogard just put them on their back and yeah. deserves some note there because that's not an easy thing to do the way he does business, which is driving, body contact, tough finishes. Rico, it seemed like six, seven straight trips down the floor, and it was just money. It was. And then you have Aikens out there hitting like three or four uh, three-pointers at key times, keeping them in that game. But you're right. Two New York guys had a great game. Unfortunately, neither was Tyson Walker. Oh, Masood he hit the Noel. shot to get him to overtime. Yeah. yeah, that this guy hits one three pointer pretty much the entire tournament, and then turns to Steph Curry from the logo. Yeah, and and look, it's just um, for me, I'm not going to let the team off the hook with the whole "Wow, what a game!" You know, what was your favorite moment? I'm not into it. MSU basketball is based on defense, toughness, and rebounding. Um, their defense last night was horrific, and if you think that was just the magic of a five seven point guard. Fine. You're welcome to think that. But I would encourage you to sit down, watch the game again with clear eyes, and really watch. And all these assists that you're ooing and eyeing over, ask yourself, why are those players open? Because MSU continued to overhelp. They had a faulty plan. And once he rolled his ankle, there was two things. There was no reason for Tyson Walker to be on him. And second of all, there was no reason to help. You just had to force him to score on one leg. And if he lit us up for 40, I'm going to live with it. But Rico and I, I think I can speak for Rico in one point on this. We can't live with him having 20 dimes to wide open people. Mm -mm. Can't happen. No. No, because my thing is, pick your poison. Either he throws dimes and doesn't score, or he scores and not throwing dimes. But 20 and 20, guys, what are we doing here? On one leg. And it's not like... On one leg. You caught a break when he rolled that ankle. I was shocked that he came back. And immediately I'm thinking, just go at him. Whosoever he's guarding, that thing is hurting right now. Instead, nah, they let him get better as the game went on. He had started hitting that adrenaline. And yeah, the the, the, the no-look passing. Like, guys, just know your man could be that guy. Stick to him. Don't fall asleep. And there's another back door. No, and I know a lot of people are going to be upset. Look, don't don't get don't get butthurt about it. I know Malik Hall doesn't want to be bad. I know he hasn't been the same player since injury. All right, if you think it's unfair to critique a 22 year old, I don't know what to tell you. But he's largely been awful for this team, and it's just reality. All right, if he wants his NIL money, you want to get paid to play basketball, you're going to get criticized. I'm not making it personal. Mm-hmm. But Malik Hall has been lost in space for the second half of this season. You want to blame it on the injury? Blame it. You want to tell me there's something going on I don't know about? Fair. I'm, I'm only talking basketball. Guys, Malik Hall largely killed them last night. On defense, on communication, on hustle plays, on big moments, Malik Hall absolutely killed that basketball team last night. Killed them. Yeah. And if I can't say Three that, then the- I don't know what to tell you. No, no, no. No, you're allowed to say that, Mike, because it's not personal. We all witnessed it in the final 45 seconds, three major errors. You missed the the, the and one free throw. That ties the game up. Okay, you force them, and the ball is tipped by A.J. Hogar, but it's bouncing, and instead of grabbing it and, and, and like and like you're underwater and that's an oxygen tank, instead you let it go out of bounds. They get the ball inbounds, hits the shot. Now you're down by three instead of one. He grabs it. At 17 seconds, down by one, totally different strategy. Now I put the ball in A.J. Hogard's hand and say, A.J., do what you do, drive to the basket. We'll live with the results instead of having to shoot a three. 248-539-9797. I'd love to hear from you on it. If you disagree with the perspective, it's fine. I just don't believe, you know, like T.J. texted me last night. And he's like, man, what a great game. You got to admit it. I go, T.J., I don't do Yelp ratings for losses. By one or 100, they're losses. <laughs> I'm pretty sure his brain exploded when he received that text. All right, we'll get to your Yelp, calls Yelp next. Yelp rating for losses. I mean, like, what do you want me to say? Yeah, it was a 4.5. Try the uh, Dude, try I, the Tagliatelle. It was delicious. The moral victory, fellas. I got, those, no, I got those texts all like to, well, you got to admit that was a great game. I don't have to admit that. They lost. I get and it. It was a fun it, watch for everybody involved, but by one or a hundred, losses are losses. And we're not in the final four, so... Yeah, and, and maybe maybe I feel a little bit different if all of a sudden they hit a half court shot or three quarter inch shot. But you did this to yourself, and then to make matters worse, 
Florida Atlantic wins two hours later, and you realize they were the only thing standing between you and Houston. Those are my owls. America's owls. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we'll get to your calls next.